All right, we are back. Or I guess we're on, not really back. <laughs> but, uh, um, we're back live doing this thing again. So it's been a while since I've done a, uh, a good old vlog from the McDonald's, McDonald's. But it's at a different McDonald's than I used to do these McDonald's vlogs at. So um, yeah, a little different. So anyway, hi, Andy here. And uh, yeah, once again, we're at the uh, McDonald's in you know, a different city and state. Uh, from the first one, so yeah, um, just hanging out. Um, was watching some of my older uh, McDonald's vlogs, and uh, just got done eating here. Threw out all my stuff. Um, it's pretty good. Had to wait a little bit, but uh, case raw. So yeah, I was just watching some of my old McDonald's vlogs, and I was thinking like, man, it'd be kind of cool to to do one of those again. Um, Although this this one's a bit noisier because we got like uh, all kinds of highway noise and sorts of other stuff, so I do apologize if that shows up in the live stream. Um, but anyway, man, I really do like these uh, these raw vlogs. Um, it's kind of nice to just like kind of go out and about and uh, record some stuff without worrying about bringing it back home and putting it together and. All this other stuff, so that's nice. Um, now, I guess, you know, we can give you guys some up dates on what's going on with me, uh, my return to Japan, all that stuff. And then we'll get into the, uh, the main uh, crux of the video today, which is 13 years on YouTube. Well, technically it would be 13 years tomorrow. But uh, yeah, 13 years on YouTube, that is insane. But we'll get to that later, so. <clears throat> Excuse me. So just some updates on me. Um, uh, brr, words. <laughs> Should've had some iced coffee while I was here, right? But in any event, um, yeah, speaking of coffee, I've actually been cutting back on, on caffeine as of late. Uh, it sucked for like the first two weeks. You know, I figured it'd take me about a week to get over it, but like, it wasn't really until this week that I started feeling normal. Um, before then, it was just like, you know, it's hard getting out of bed in the morning. My sleep schedule was all over the place, and uh, yeah, I just I didn't feel like awake, even after just having one cup of coffee, um, which is kind of scary because. <laughs> You know, I, I just cut back on how much coffee I was drinking. I didn't completely cut it out. Um, but some things I, I am noticing since I cut back on coffee was that um, I'm much more, I guess, appreciative of the one cup of coffee in the morning that I, that I make for myself. You know, I, I don't take it for granted like I used to when I was drinking two cups. It's a, it's a small thing, but, you know. And I think... You know, long term, it's going to be good for my energy levels. Because I notice my energy levels are very inconsistent. You know, there's times where I have a good amount of energy and uh, can make stuff. I'm in the creative flow of things. And then other times, uh, it's hard to even get out of bed. You know, and I guess that's life, right? Um, but last night was pretty good. Um, last night, I managed to get like a whole bunch of stuff done. You know, and also trying to find a good, um, just time to do it. You know, when is my creative peak time? Because I think the thing that's been kind of throwing me off, one of the many things that's been throwing me off, is uh, when I work on videos. Because, like, one of my things in order to kind of combat burnout was to not work late nights. Um, I, I wanted to just have, you know, my late nights... Just kind of sitting in bed, either reading, watching anime, whatever, and just just kind of relaxing, not really doing anything work-related. You know, I would just do all my stuff either in the morning or in the afternoon, and I could just goof off, guilt-free, basically. Yeah, it rhymes. Nice. Um, but uh, you know, I did all that <clears throat> stuff like really late at night because uh, one of my clients wanted some last-minute editing and stuff done I'm just like fuck it I don't want to wait till the morning to do this so I just knocked it all out easy peasy no problem 
Um, so I'm just wondering, like, how can I combat, you know, having a healthy sleep schedule with uh, doing most of my work at night? So um, I'd really do like the effectiveness of me working at night. It just like everything flows a lot better. You know, during the day I'm just way too anxious and you know, I'm worried about getting things done. And then by the time night rolls around. You know, I'm trying to go to sleep, but I feel guilty for not getting anything done. It just leads to me being a big anxious mess. So, uh, I think I'm going to be experimenting with doing more things at night. Um, but I think setting, <clears throat> setting boundaries has been best for me. Um, you know, as, I've been as I told you guys before, um, I went through a big case of burnout um, late last year, early into this year. Um, where I didn't really want to do anything, or my output was very minimal. Um, and that was really hard for me, because, you know, I really do enjoy do doing videos, and I know some of you guys in the Discord, which I have a Discord, by the way, um, might have to make that a, its own video to kind of advertise it so more of you guys can get in on the action. But that's where I do most of my interacting with, with you guys, and spitballing ideas, sharing different interests and stuff like that and uh, I really really do enjoy it so I might have to make a, a separate video for that just to show you guys uh, what all goes down in there give you an invite code and whatnot though I might actually change that up here soon but <clears throat> excuse me in any event um, you know I've been working on myself mostly um, just trying to find the best ways to stave off burnouts. Um, you know, just trying to build a healthy, a healthier work relationship between myself and my work. Because uh, I felt like, you know, when I first started doing freelance video editing, I wanted, you know, I had something to prove. You know, it was just like, you know, I was constantly working really long hours not really making a whole lot of money relative to how much I was working but I did it because I wanted to put in the hours, put in the work, put in the time, uh, generate a portfolio of work to show people that you know yes I can actually do this, I can actually edit and look at what I've made so far and all the people that I've worked with and help them out and everything and uh, you know, I, in, in some ways I felt you know in some ways like invested in my client's success and you know that was kind of a good mentality to have but I noticed that it wasn't necessarily a very healthy mentality in the long run because um, just you know as an editor there's only really so much you can do to contribute to your client's success you know the client success is you know predicated on <laughs> several different factors you know 95% of the of which are completely out of your control you can make suggestions but anybody can make suggestions so you know the only thing you really have control of is you know the video that you give them and even then they may ask you to like redo some bits or add this cut this switch this around stuff like that so you know I've learned to you know, build a much healthier relationship between me, my work, my clients. So, um, it's not that I don't care about their success. I do. It's just that it's, you know, my, my focus is to make the best videos for them and for their audience. Um, and we'll just kind of keep it at that because, like, their own success, you know, is uh, is won by them. You can give them the tools, but it's ultimately up to them to uh, to carry out the mission. So, you know, I'll just work on building up my own skill set, making the best videos that I can in a timely manner, and uh, do it consistently because that's the main thing. You know, I've noticed I've, I've been slipping up, you know, this year as far as consistency with things. I know some of my clients can uh, can attest to that. And to those clients, I, I am really sorry. It's just, I'm going through some stuff. But, uh, you know, coming out of it. And uh, ready to, you know, 
get this year off on the right foot. Um, as you guys know, I applied to a college out in Japan. Um, I think I might have let the name slip a couple times, so it's no big secret, but uh, I'm not going to overtly mention it um, just because I don't know if things are going to work out with that particular college. And, uh, you know, if they do work out later on, that's fine, but as it stands now, uh, it's all, it's, uh, kind of, I don't know, <laughs> basically. So, um, and I, I made a, a new Andy Before Japan Day, talking a bit more about this, uh, but, you know, that video is going to be coming out very soon, and in that video, you know, I say, I give you guys some updates going on with it but basically uh, the the interview process which was after I submitted all my paperwork and they got all my transcripts and all that stuff um, they set up an interview with me and that's part of their application process now I never been through an interview before or a college interview I should say so I, I didn't really know what to expect so I looked up online all kinds of different questions and things that most colleges typically ask uh, for interviews and it's just kind of like typical job interview stuff but college related like you know what made you interested in this college and what can you contribute to this college and you know maybe telling you a bit more about yourself and things like that you know stuff like that uh, so you know I had some uh, responses and stuff queued up you know just kind of in the old head brain and I felt ready to go so when I got the interviews through Skype like I I went out all out on this you know I was wearing nice clothes made sure my hair was looking nice and I think I might have you know pulled it back a bit so it didn't look all throwy and stuff but uh, I made sure I was nice presentable had the good lighting made my bed all that stuff but uh, you know when they came on it was weird, man, because it wasn't just like a one-on-one -on -one session like I was expecting. Um, it was between me and uh, three other people. So they kind of like passed the uh, the camera around when they were ready to like ask a question. But it was basically like 13 minutes of them asking me like why my grades were so, so shit. Um, essentially. And I, I did expect to uh, get some questions about it. like. Why did you, why'd you do so poorly at this school and this school? Um, what are you doing to uh, fix that? You know, if you do get accepted here, what will you do to uh, address those problems? Um, what have you done in the uh, gap year that you haven't been in school? You know, stuff like that. And uh, I managed to address all of it, but just they kind of came at me Taken, uh, taken aback by that actually. I didn't expect them to be so aggro about my grades and this, that, and other. But I did expect them to ask me about it in some fashion. I just didn't expect it to be the entire conversation, you know? So, hey, what up, Zappy Games? Zappy Gaming, rather. But yeah, um. So. I just felt like a complete piece of shit after that interview. You know, it was just, I felt so defeated, you know. It was a very, very low feeling. Like, I just, I literally, like, sat in my chair just in stunned silence. I wasn't listening to any music, wasn't looking at stuff on the computer. I was just, like, facing away from my monitor, just completely, like, out to lunch. I was just like, what the fuck just happened? Like, I, I couldn't process it. You know, it just, I just felt so completely defeated by it. You know, and I, you know, I kept telling myself, well, if my grades were such an issue, then they would have just told me that even before the interview started. Like, why waste everybody's time if this guy's grades are so shit and we're not going to bother accepting him? You know, just send him a little little thanks for trying kid email and uh, go on from there so that interview was last week uh, 
You know, the whole weekend I was just completely out to lunch. And watching some anime, just trying to get my mind off of it, basically. And, uh, you know, I've kind of come to terms with it at this point. Uh, so, they said they're going to get back to, to me within a week or two of that interview. So, if I don't hear anything by uh, the close of business Friday, Japan time, which would probably be, what, like, morning time tomorrow, my time. Uh, it's probably going to happen next week. Just kind of, uh, you passed, kid. <laughs> Even though I felt like I conducted myself as best as I could, given the, uh, the circumstances, you know, I, I don't expect to, uh, to be going to college out there at this time. So, you know, moving on to plan B, which, uh, you know, I did anticipate grades being an issue, so I figured in the event that they wouldn't accept me, I would just go to the local community college here in town, um, build up my GPA, um, save up some BAH, put that aside into uh, going out to uh, out to Japan and uh, I think that's gonna be gonna be the route for me but uh, I'm waiting to hear back from him first before I do anything you know because you know it'd be kind of dumb to like go through all this and they're like yeah you made it kid you can come out to Japan you know <laughs> so but you know I got contingency plans. You know, if you give me the okay, I'll sell the sell this car, use that money for, uh, for money and a little bit of living sustenance until the bill kicks in. Try to save up as much as I can between now and then, which you know, since we're approaching March, really is it's kind of crunch time, basically for that. Be seal to uh, so if I can sell it. Not warm. Okay. All right, and we're back. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's basically what I'm looking at. You know, if I get accepted, sell the car, make as much, make, make as much money as I can between now and then, uh, get rid of as, mu as uh, get rid of like all my stuff I'm not taking with me to Japan, extra clothes, electronics, stuff like that. Um, use the money. It's like not all my stuff's worth a whole lot in the market, uh, but you know, do what I got to do to uh, get where I need to get basically and if i do get rejected which i think long term will probably be the best thing for me it'll give me more time to save up and uh i'll just go out to the community college um build up my gpa collect that bah save it away it rhymed kind of <laughs> uh and then just uh reapply in the fall you know and if i still get rejected just keep on going until uh, until they say yay. <laughs> um, but obviously, this next time I'm going to be applying to uh, to more more colleges instead of just the ones that I went through. So yeah, um, you know, feeling feeling pretty good about it now that I've really thought through everything. And really, like looking back on it, I probably should have just went to college you know, as soon as I got here, but, you know, I figured I had a pretty good shot at uh, getting into school I wanted to go to, and 19 schedule up yet at the time, because their site was kind of a mess. It's a little better now, but it was kind of a mess back then. So I thought that the enrollment times, you know, start stop dates for the classes, overlapped. So that was the main point of contention. So I didn't want to, you know, go to school here and uh, have to basically drop out at the last month just to go to school over there. You know what I'm saying? So I figured that wasn't really an option. But after actually looking through the 2019 um, catalog, or not catalog, but like the 2019 schedule, uh, it is definitely possible for me to uh, to do that. I mean, to not skip a month or whatever drop out or whatever so it's possible for me to like take summer classes here get my gpa up <clears throat> show them like you know hey i'm going to college at such and such place you know i have such and such grades so far um is it okay now they may they may even say no because you know it's just one semester so 
I may have to prove like something consistent. I don't know. Um, but um, and I, I did get some some glowing recommendations, you know, from from an old shipmate of mine. He was my LPO. Got it. Really good. Like that shit fucking brought me to tears. Actually, just reading it, I'm just like, fuck, dude. You know. So did a good job. Did a good job. But uh, there's that. Um, you know the uh, the statement of purpose that I wrote, basically outlining my background, my situation, why I didn't do so well, um, going to those colleges that I went to, and you know, I had to condense it a bit. But like I've been saying before, it was largely due to environment, really. You know, I didn't have a support structure out in uh, in Michigan, and there wasn't really anything for me that was creatively fulfilling, you know, just felt like, you know, I couldn't really, like, go anywhere and make stuff, you know, and plus, you know, I was just going through all kinds of different uh, adjustments and stuff, and I've talked about these throughout my videos, so you, you guys know, you guys know the drill. If you don't, be sure to watch my old videos on the Indiesan archives. <laughs> so, um, that's basically where I'm at. You know, we're like, what, almost 23 minutes in? <laughs> it's just been personal updates. Uh, but yeah, man. Um, that's where I'm at right now. Just waiting on the word from them. You know, just kind of take it from there. You know, just doing that. Doing some freelance stuff. Um... <clears throat> You know, just doing my, uh, my work at home job, which uh, that was kind of an odd thing that happened. So, um, you know, I guess we're not really going to get into that. But uh, yeah, just do my thing there. I uh, was trying to save, us, save up as much money as I can, hold on to as much money, you know, try to save up, things like that. Um, so, I guess we'll get into the uh the uh, the title of this live stream 13 years on youtube so i guess technically tomorrow would be my 13 year anniversary uh, march 1st 2006 was uh, when i officially started my very first channel which is now my archive channel the andy sound archives um but that was actually my original channel and uh yeah when i started it you know, I originally started that channel to uh, leave comments on other people's videos and to just interact with them because, you know, YouTube, at, at the time, there was really no other video sharing website like YouTube, which is why it, you know, became what it became. And uh, the main thing was, it was people um, being able to upload whatever they wanted. It wasn't a, a curated website, per se. Uh, and people uploading on a fairly regular basis so you know every week or every other week something like that um, and the comments you know being able to interact with the people behind the videos and not just say oh that was funny huh you know oh, men get punched in junk cat video <laughs> you know stuff like that um, there was you know interaction between the you know the video maker and the audience and that was one of the main draws for YouTube for me was that connection and I wanted to you know reach out to people that I watched on a regular basis and make comments and stuff in order to do that I had to sign up for uh, for an account so I did that um, never really thought I'd actually make my own stuff uh, but I also used that to kind of upload some old um, clips from you know back when my friends were in uh, karate class and karate tournaments and stuff because uh, they originally had them on video CDs and you know I wanted something to where I could like show them on the computer without having to like find the video CD and put it in the computer and then like fast forward to the part that I think is like really funny so I ended up uh, just putting the clip up on YouTube so we could watch like my friend kicking this guy in the face <laughs> or this one guy like one punching somebody and they just like fall down you know, oh, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I was showing my friends band practice and everything. Um, 
you know, I didn't get into making my own videos until, uh, what, oh yeah, September 2008. I should know this. September 2nd, 2008. Just the day after Labor Day, I believe. Yeah. <clears throat> Around Labor Day. I don't remember. Something like that. Anyway, um, so I managed to get a camera off of eBay <clears throat> back when I was working at Walmart. Wasn't really making much money there at all. I uh, managed to find a used camera. It was a San Diego Zacti CG6. You know, definitely budget uh, entry level camera. And, you know, keep in mind, back in the day, you know, we didn't have all the fancy schmancy stuff that you see on YouTube nowadays. You know, we don't didn't have the DSLRs on the Gorilla Pods and a little road mic dangling up top and whatnot. <coughs> we usually had to kind of, or even cell phones. That was another thing. Like this, this was not a thing back in the day. You know, we pretty much had either just what we could scrounge out of the closet. You know, maybe the mom, maybe mom's old video camera, or um, the uh, the two most popular cameras at that time <clears throat> were the flip cam and the San Zacti series of cameras. Now the flip cam, uh, despite the name, didn't have a flip out screen. The screen was fixed in the back. The reason it was called a flip cam is because the little USB dongle flipped out and you just like connect that to your computer without having to use SD cards or any of that other stuff. And that was kind of the novelty of it. And plus it was, <clears throat> it was a cheap camera. It allowed people to get in on the action, very low price point. And then the other line was the San Zacti, which did have the flip out screen. It was the old uh, pistol grip style cameras. So that was, you know, another good camera. And it was the camera that one of the guys that I watched on YouTube in the beginning, Tokyo Kuni, that was the camera he used. But he used a uh, kind of a, a mid-range uh, price point camera. Um, so I decided to just get one in the same like body style, but a little bit more my price range, I guess we'll say. So I got a used one off of eBay that had a strip tripod, and I got it for like a little under 100 bucks, I think. 90 bucks something like that uh, which is a pretty good deal at the time now you can get them for like 30 or 25 bucks so uh, but in any event <clears throat> you know start off with that camera you know I bought it initially to take pictures to sell stuff on eBay because I had some old books and wanted to sell some games and things like that on eBay and I needed a camera to actually show the stuff instead of just using stock photos you know, because I want to show the condition that the books were in, games, stuff like that. And uh, I also decided, you know, while I'm busy doing... Alright, sorry about that. <laughs> the thing kind of disconnected there. But in any event, like I was saying... <coughs> <coughs> Shit. I had some water. Fuck. But anyway, like I was saying, um, you know, while I was, you know, taking photos and stuff for eBay, that was kind of the on-the-surface reason I got it. The actual reason I got it you know, the one I didn't tell my parents <laughs> at the time, was to uh, to make vlogs and to kind of, you know, share my life with people, just like uh, I saw the other YouTubers doing. And it was kind of rough at first, because, like, A, I didn't know what I was doing. B, when I first started off, I didn't have proper uh, video editing software. Um, what I used to compile the clips and stuff from my original set of videos before I even had a camera was a software called Total Video Converter and in it it had a compile feature so what you do is you would uh, memorize the time codes for that video so you'd say like from from this point to this point okay put that in and then you know from this point to this point put that in and uh, you just literally enter in the time codes in the order that you want the uh, the video to be made. <coughs> Sorry. God damn, I can barely talk. And uh, once you get all the time codes in, then you would uh, hit compile, and it would put it all together. So it was very non-intuitive. It was very clunky, very slow. Uh, and especially on my computer at the time, I didn't have like a high-end, you know, editing desktop or anything like that it was just a uh, middle of the road at best 
um, Dell desktop. Um, it took forever to render anything. And uh, I remember like some of my early videos, even after I got like Sony Vegas, which is the first actual editing software I used. Used that for years and years and years. It wasn't until, what was it like 2016, 20, like late 2015, when I got the uh, Adobe Creative Cloud and uh, <clears throat> started using Adobe exclusively, you know. I wanted to uh, to get it because you know I was going to school at the time, get a discount for that, which is nice. And I also wanted to, you know, learn, you know, get my editing skills and stuff like that up, and actually, you know, use that on a resume for something. You know, and I didn't want to say, oh, I learned to edit in Sony Vegas because Vegas is kind of looked down on as an editing software. It's kind of almost like the joke software <laughs> in a way. Um, even though it is, in its own right, a perfectly fine editor, and uh, you know, I think it's fine to start off with. Um, and I think it's gotten better recently, I believe. I've seen some screenshots and stuff, so it's looking a bit more Premiere-ish, which is good. Um, but in any event, <clears throat> so I started off originally with Total Video Converter, which is not meant to be an editing software, it just had a compile feature that kind of sort of worked a little bit. Um, but from there, I decided to uh, invest in uh, in editing software. Got Sony Vegas. Um, started making some more edited videos, and uh, just kind of kind of grew from there, man. You know, once I joined the military, um, got a got my first um, HD camcorder, which is the Sony, or the, the, not the Sony, the Sanyo um, SH1, which was the more traditional handheld camcorder style and went up to like full HD 60 frames per second which at the time YouTube didn't support kinda wish I still had those old files but okay sera so got that um, and just continued to to upgrade over the years and uh, learn better um, editing and things like that I think honestly like my editing really improved once I uh, I started doing the freelance video editing cuz like before you know, I didn't really care so much about the editing. It was just to, like, cut out any extraneous parts and, uh, you know, just put out the video. That was basically it, really. Um, but once I got more into the nuance of editing for other people, I started incorporating that a bit more into my own stuff, and I started getting uh, used to that style of editing. And I really do enjoy it, but, you know, for my own vlogs and stuff like that I don't incorporate it as much mostly just due to time reasons but uh, I think once I get out to Japan and get some good good ass b-roll and whatnot I think we're definitely going to, uh, to incorporate that style for sure but you know just doing the little vlogs in my room or vlogs out in town and stuff like that just sitting in my car eh, probably not so much <laughs> but yeah uh, it's just been a crazy journey these past uh, almost like 15 13 years on on YouTube and uh, you know I haven't had the uh, the massive success that others who've been on the platform this long have had uh, I've seen a lot of people come and go on the platform um, but for me you know I just I love making videos you know even though my channels may not be as successful as other people's channels. It's not really uh, a point of concern for me anymore. It used to be. It used to be kind of an ego thing, I guess. You know, it's like, well, my channel only has this many subs. Meanwhile, you know, so they just started their YouTube channel. And they already have either as many subs as I do or like more. And like, what what are they doing that I'm not doing? I'm doing it better than they are. You know, just all the jealousy and stuff, which. I guess hampered my own success in a way, you know, which is good because, you know, I didn't, the attitude didn't really serve me. But now, you know, my main uh, focus is on the freelance video editing, editing for others. You know, that's where I see my success at because if it wasn't for me <clears throat> making all those videos for my channels over the years, um, you know, even though the videos themselves didn't really go anywhere, um, relatively speaking, you know, but if it wasn't for me making all those videos, I wouldn't have had the editing experience 
and you know knowledge whether intuitively or learned about editing and just getting stuff done in an efficient manner um, I wouldn't have had all that had I not worked on those videos so you know some people may say oh the videos you know they weren't worth it but like really they were just kind of practice in a way for me to to get to this point for editing for others but also you know I keep those videos up because they document that time in my life they uh, you know show a moment in time of where I was at that point in my life and even though the videos themselves may not be of good quality especially by today's standards um, they still hold a very special place in my heart you know for that moment in time and it also shows the progression of my editing skills I guess you know you see the different uh, camera upgrades you see uh, just different uh, presentation even just the way I'm speaking and everything is different you know some of my earlier vlogs were you know I was a bit higher pitched and you know I just kind of kind of sound like this a little bit you know it's kind of kind of interesting to uh, to look back on those early early videos really and I kind of sound like that a little bit I can't sound exactly like it was but it's something like that um, <clears throat> But yeah, and that also, you know, gave me the, uh, the courage and confidence to do other things. And, you know, with, with the whole freelance video editing thing, um, that started originally to help one of my friends out. You know, you may know him online as Tikio Sam. He's out in L.A. now, time's recording. But uh, I did that originally to help him out because he was coming back to YouTube. Uh, he left his full-time salaryman job and was looking to give YouTube... Uh, a real real shot at that point was doing daily content and everything and his hard drive had crashed so he was a, in a line group with me talking about it and I'm like well shit dude maybe I could just edit for you while you get your hard drive situation fixed which would be about like a week or two so he had like the raw files and intro outro which I just took from one of his older videos and uh, managed to put some stuff together while he was getting his hard drive fixed and after he got that taken care of, he was like, you know what? I really like how quick you're putting these videos out. You know, editing's not really my strong suit. It takes me forever to do this stuff. But he managed to make stuff pretty quickly. So, you know, he took me on as his, uh, as his main editor. And from there, he introduced me to, you know, more people who would become my clients. And then through friends of friends of friends, I would get more clients. And, you know, eventually through word of mouth, from my client work and stuff, you know, I would get more little onesie twosies here and there. And uh, yeah, it's really, really become something as of late. You know, it's just, you know, I've really begun to take this, this very seriously as a career path in a way. But uh, I want to expand on that more. You know, I want to work with. Uh, with more clients, um, I want to, you know, expand my network and uh, do bigger, better things. And I also want to do some behind-the-camera stuff as well. I felt like, you know, the stuff I did with my folks' production company in Ohio was pretty top-notch. Uh, I wanted to get more into that again, and uh, yeah, that's you know some of the main reasons I want to go back to Japan. You know, in addition to eat. And experience and just a lot of stuff it's uh gonna be pretty hard breast press if you know in tokyo and bored <laughs> did that and you broke but even then there's there's still st a lot of stuff for you to do even if you don't have a lot of money or any at all i have to make that once I got and my editing tutorials have done very well um even though i haven't uploaded really anything you know tutorial wise on that channel in about half a year uh, the tutorials still get consistent amount of views traffic things like that so you know it's definitely definitely a sign and I want to expand upon doing the video editing and uh, expand it to other things you know I want to create a uh, I guess like an agency or whatever basically full of 
both editors that will uh, put together stuff. You know, basically production company, essentially. You know, we'll put together clients' videos. Either <clears throat> we'll uh, we'll film it for them while they're doing their on-camera stuff, or you know, they just send us the raw files and we put it together, however they want to do it. Um, I definitely want to do something like that, you know, long term. Because as much as I like editing videos, I want to expand upon that and uh, be able to help other people out as well, you know. Bring on people, bring on other up-and-coming editors and kind of show them the ropes and have them work on big projects as well and get their names out there. And I think that's going to be uh, where I go moving forward in the, you know, short-term, long-term, I guess, of things. So... Yeah, um, I really gotta pee, guys, and it's been almost 45 minutes that I've been on live stream. So, um, with that said, y'all, this is the Andy Son, signing for now, making you guys with an old school Andy Son outro. Uh, I want to thank you guys for liking, commenting with the thumbs, and if you're an old schooler, the stars, stars, I, I don't know, <laughs> the hand sign for stars stars I don't know. and uh, send a few friends to the party like and comment and subscribing like I said and as always we'll see you next time until later guys bye